Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of I Love My Job podcast. My name is Cassie Crossy and I'm your host. This interview was a lot of fun to learn about a opportunity and jobs that are not the normal ones that you go to school for. I met with Danielle who is a features editor for a publication online and the executive editor of SortaCrunchyMom.com. She lives in Chicago, where she just recently moved to, and spends her days writing, editing, and dreaming about a world where everyone agrees the Oxford comma is a thing. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this interview, and at the end she'll give you some ways to contact her if you have any questions. Hi Danielle, thank you for joining me on the I Love My Job podcast. Hi Cassie, thanks for having me. I am so glad you are with me today. I wanted to learn more about you when you first contacted me because I think this is a interesting career opportunity for people, especially with the way internet and online and all of that is happening and everybody is considering, should I go to a corporate job or should I look for something that's not quite corporate uh, that mm -hmm. I could work from home? So can you introduce yourself? Tell me a little bit about you and your personal life and then in a few sentences, just what your job is. Sure. So my name is Daniel Antos. Uh, I'm, I live in Chicago. I just moved here three or four months ago with my husband. I have a seven month old baby. I work from home. I'm a digital editor and a writer. So I work for a digital marketing publication. Um, I do like copy editing, but I also help manage workflow and do a lot of like project management type stuff. It's completely remote. Uh, I also have a publication for parenting called Sorta Crunchy Mom and also completely remote. That one's just getting off the ground. Uh, so yeah, I totally work from home in pajamas or yoga pants, whatever. <laughs> um, I do tend to keep pretty traditional hours. My husband also works from home. Uh, he works for a larger corporation. And so it works best for me just to stay on a normal schedule. But yeah, that's my life. <laughs> How long have you been with this company? Was it something, have you always been working from home or is this a new experience for you? Um, I've been, so I went full-time freelance about two and a half years ago. And so the main company that I work for is actually um, a freelance client. It just, it's what you might call like an anchor client. So if you go freelance, which mine is writing and editing is, is my niche, um, it's good to have anchor clients. So maybe two or three clients that take up a good portion of your time. So you're not hustling for every $25 for an article. You know what I mean? If you're writing or editing, it just, it's hard to add all of those up. So having a couple of anchor clients the way that I do is for me, what makes it viable. Um, if you're able to get the gigs making $400 per article, sweet. You might be able to hustle for every dollar that way. Uh, but that's not necessarily doable for most people. What kind of education, schooling or training did you need to become a digital editor? Um, so I have a super applicable <laughs> college degree in art history. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it actually is sort of applicable because, um, so my degree is in art history and criticism. So I spent a lot of time writing papers, um, write a 12 page paper about a Caravaggio painting. Um, so I got very good at just sitting down and doing the work and just writing it. It's something that everyone struggles with, whether they're a good writer or not, is actually just sitting down and doing the work, just getting pages, uh, words on paper. Um, so I did learn that just organizational skills, stuff like that did come from my degree, but in general, I don't, I mean, maybe now I graduated in 2010 and I was on the 10 year college plan. So, <laughs> um, there may be education opportunities that are more applicable now. There wasn't really when I started college. Okay. Um, it's just, I'm 33. So the internet came about when I was in, I mean, it became really popular when I was in middle school, probably. Um, we had Oregon Trail, stuff like that. So I don't know if that makes sense. But So to move into the digital editing position, editor position, mm -hmm. were you a writer at that same place beforehand? So what kind of job experience did you need to get this gig? Okay, so copy editing. That was my entrance into my main client um, is just being detail oriented, being able to not just catch the grammar mistakes, you know, whether someone used the right there or the right your, but also the flow being able to take work from people who know very well what they're saying, but aren't always that great at saying it, that that's definitely the skill that's helped me the most. 
but you, you you didn't have any writing classes on copy editing. This is just a natural talent you have. Um, so actually, if anyone's familiar with digital marketing, uh, there was what they call content mills. So it was websites that would just churn out massive quantities of content and it wasn't always high quality content. And that's actually where I started. So you were getting paid maybe a dollar 25 for 200, 300 word articles. And this was only maybe seven years ago. Um, and that was when Google was saying that you just needed more content or that's the way people were taking it anyways. Um, and as they moved away from more quality, less quantity, that's kind of shifted, but that's where I started. And yeah, the copy editing was just something I've always kind of been good at and being able to pick out mistakes in other people's writer writing. And on the freelance side, just broadly, what mm -hmm. kind of salary ranges are there for someone in, in a type of role like you are just generally? It's really hard because it's going to depend what niche you're in. Um, anywhere from 30 to probably 60,000 it, and it can go higher and it can go lower. It just depends on the clients that you're taking. If you're making lower than that, then you're probably not charging enough to be honest. Is there any full-time kind of jobs or are almost everybody in this field freelance? No, there's absolutely full-time jobs. So um, a lot, there's a lot of publications that are digital nowadays, right? You've got uh, Entrepreneur, you've got Inc., um, Hello Giggles, you have The Penny Hoarder. There's a lot of different just digital publications. These are the sites that you see in your Facebook feed over and over and over again. Somebody's writing that content. Somebody's editing that content. There's a whole team behind that content making sure that it ends up in your Facebook feed. And many of them do have um, corporate headquarters where you would work a pretty traditional job. That's just not happened to be how it worked out for me. What do you think is the split? Is it 50-50 between corporate and freelance or different? I don't know, honestly. Um, it's hard because my experience is limited to just a few publications. Um, I think it's going to depend on the industry, um, whether you're in. So like Inc. and Entrepreneur, Forbes, those are definitely more corporate um, more of the bootstrapped companies are going to be smaller. So some of the publications end up under larger, just like any newspaper. Like if you live in a small town, your newspaper is probably not owned by itself. It's owned by probably the same company that owns the New York Times or the Chicago Tribune, something like that. And sometimes the websites end up that way as well. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Tell me about your typical day or week. I'm sure your days probably vary quite a bit. <laughs> they do. I honestly try to keep them pretty much the same as much as possible. So I have a seven month old. If you don't have that experience, then your day might be a little different. And I hang out with her. And if she's chill, then I'll put her in the pack and play and try to work for a little bit. Um, I have a nanny about 15 hours a week currently. Um, I see, feel so fancy saying a nanny. I'm not super fancy. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a very, very nice lady that comes over and takes care of my child for hours so that I can get work done. And between that, yeah, when she gets there at 10, I sit down, I dig in and I get done anything that I know has to be done that day. So my goal is to get done the absolutes. Um, and I tend to try to work a little bit ahead because I have a kid. If you don't have a kid, you're not going to have that issue. So yeah, I work from 10 until three, have lunch at some point, usually leftovers, super exciting stuff. <laughs> and then the baby naps and I work some more. Um, occasionally on the weekends or the evenings I'll work uh, as well. And that's just part of trying to balance with having family and, uh, and working remotely. Do you dedicate a certain hour or two just for writing and copy editing and the, the project management and turning off emails or any kind of rhythm that you do in that work time? No, I probably should. I hear it's helps you make you much more effective. <laughs> um, I tend to keep my email open, which is a terrible habit. Um, <laughs> I occasionally I'll turn it off, but generally I don't. Um, I'd probably be a much more effective worker if I did that. Uh, but generally, so we use a, pro a project management software called Podio. And so I'll look in there and check to see if I have any tasks that are due that day. And I try to knock those out as quick as possible. Um, I edit like copy editing, maybe every two, three days. It just depends on our workload. Um, if we have a lot of articles coming through, I'll try to clear them out. That's something that takes a lot of focus for me. Um, just to see those mistakes. So I usually try to do those when I know I have a good chunk of time to just slide through all of them. Like Sundays, I tend to work a little bit on Sundays because this is what works for me. I sit down on Sunday evening or afternoon at some point, check all the emails from the weekend because we have some workers who are in uh, the Philippines. So they work 
my Sunday night is their Monday morning. So I go through and check all the emails, reply to anything that I need to, and try to clear out my copy editing queue. And that way, when I start Monday, I'm fresh and clean. Like, I'm not stressed. I know what I need to do. I'm caught up from the start. So that, that helps me a lot. Nice. Yeah, I actually do that on Fridays. I, I like to have a clean slate if possible when I come mm. in on Monday morning. Yeah, if I did it Friday, I would still have too much email. So the, the Sunday works for me. I'm not stressed. Nobody else is working, which is also nice. What about your actual job? What do you not like about it? When you're freelance, I guess you can be more particular. But is there any part of it that is not your favorite? So I do work with an incredible team. And so I do, I really like that. What I don't like is that, so if you work in a traditional corporate office, this, say you guys land a huge client, you get to, maybe you guys go out for lunch. You're like, yeah, we killed that. Go, you know, I don't get to do that. That kind of stinks. I wish I had that. I mean, we do get together a couple times a year when we can. Um, we have a couple of events that we do, but not being able to, I just turned to my husband and I'm like, dude, totally rocked it. And he's like, uh-huh, sure, man, whatever. <laughs> he has no idea what I'm talking about. He has no idea of any of my industry. <laughs> so we, we try to support each other that way because like I said, he works from home too. But yeah, I wish, I wish I had the ability to kind of celebrate with coworkers when things go really well. Yeah, I work quite a bit when I'm not traveling. Uh, so I work from home when I'm not. And I, I know what you mean. There's no water cooler. <laughs> there's no coffee machine to hang around and and just get that energy from other folks. Yeah, we use uh, Slack. I don't know if you've heard of mm -hmm. that. Yes. We use that. That helps because um, they have Giphy is in that. And so just even just doing the GIFs to see what will pop up because it's a, it's a program where you type it out. You type slash Giphy and then a word and it chooses randomly a GIF. And I don't know, it's just a funny way that we kind of try to bond with each other. To joke around and stuff. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. And what do you love about your job? I love the flexibility. I love that I get to spend a lot of time with my daughter. Like I have friends who are just like, I see my kids two hours a day and I just can't imagine. It's terrible to me that that's normal. Um, I love the fact that I can go spend a week in Florida with my parents so that they can spend time with their granddaughter and I can work while I'm there. I love that I can pretty much go and do anything at any time. I mean, not always. There's deadlines and we do events online and stuff like that. But in general, if I want to stop and go have lunch with my husband, I can do that. You know, there's no one over my shoulder tapping their watch, you know, making sure that I got in my specific eight, nine hours a day. So that's definitely my favorite part. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Uh, do you have an interesting or funny story about something that's happened to you on your job? I've been doing copywriting for a long time. I did work corporate. So this is more of a corporate one, but it's still really funny. Um, so the company that I work for, we wrote websites for small businesses of all kind. It was kind of a budget web company where they just produced a lot, a lot of websites for smaller businesses that couldn't afford, you know, thousand dollar websites. It's a couple hundred bucks. And the best site that ever came through, I got to write the copy for a site called fire in the hole and it was an anal itching cream. And I hope that's appropriate for your show. <laughs> <laughs> oh I my gosh. <sighs> I've never forgotten that. It's probably been five years since I wrote that site. And oh. Yes. Well, and somebody's got to do it, right? You know? Yes. <laughs> there's there's always something out there. I'm sure that there are companies that specialize just in building uh, pornographic websites, right? Yeah, and they probably make a lot of money. <laughs> they probably do because there's probably quite a bit of money in that. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if someone was listening to this, do you have any advice of what kind of person succeeds in this type of job? So you, you work virtual, you're an editor. Mm -hmm. I, that takes a certain personality. So what would you tell this person if they were looking at a job like this? You definitely have to be a self-starter. You have to be willing to take what you're given and run with it. Um, if you need specific instructions on every detail, it's probably not going to work well for you and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that if you truly truly are an extrovert and need to be constantly around people you're going to struggle because you're just not and if you're going to work with your spouse then you might want to make sure you guys really 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 get along if you spend a lot of time together every day 
Well, if somebody is um, wanting to start this kind of role, uh, do you think going into the, the approach that you took, which was writing and then moving into copy editing and then being an editor, it seems like a logical progression? It does. Um, today, you wouldn't be able to start with the content mills because those don't exist. If they do, they shouldn't. So don't write for them. <laughs> don't devalue the industry by writing for those kind of rates. Um, but there's a lot of places you could start. Um, Flex Jobs is a good website. Odesk, Elance, stuff like that. You could start, um, if you're in college, you could start writing for, like, a, I'm sure there's digital newspapers these days at colleges. You could definitely start there and get the experience and then slowly move up. The writers that you work with now today, are they experienced writers? Do, do they write for free? Or uh, you mentioned about paid articles. That's why I was wondering. So that's a complicated question. If you want to make a living as a writing, you should not be writing for free. Pass maybe one or two articles just to be able to have links to show other people that you can write. All right, so people who write for Inc., let's start there. People who write for Inc.com, Huffington Post, stuff like that, they do not get paid. What they're, They don't get paid in cash. What they're getting paid in is exposure. And my husband has been a photographer on the side for many years, so I understand how that sounds. But you have to understand, if you are an SEO expert and you want to tell people about SEO and also show that you are an SEO expert, you would write for Huffington Post, you know, 10 SEO mistakes that everyone makes. And then they get down to the bottom of that article and they go, oh, this guy, this guy or girl really knows what they're talking about. I need SEO help. I'm going to hire them. That's how you get paid. But if you're, or if you like the publication, the parenting publication I'm doing, if I wrote for Huffington Post for free, it would be because they would then see that I have this publication that they would hopefully go to. That is different than someone who wants content for their website so for their company blog or something like that. Does that make sense? I'm yes. sorry. It's kind of hard to explain. Okay. No, no, no it, it does. Um, th there's a difference between writing for exposure and being a writer who is doing the research and building those articles, as you would expect if you pick up uh, a Time magazine or something. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Do you have any book recommendations that may or may not be job related that you enjoy reading? I love to read. I'm a huge reader. So I've been reading Leanne Morty lately, um, which is total fluff. Uh, but I love it because that's, I don't know, for whatever reason, that's where my head's been lately. The Husband's Secret was really good. But as far as more like industry kind of books, um, Don't Make Me Think is a great book. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's it has some to do with like UX um, user experience, designing websites, and it has some to do with writing and it, some of it's just applicable to everyday life. But it's basically not making people think. Oh, it sounds good. It is. It's, it's making it easy for people to do what you want them to do by telling them what you want them to do, if that makes sense. In your free time, do you have any hobbies that keep you busy? I guess with a seven month old, um, <laughs> uh, you stay pretty busy now. I do. Um, well, kind of a hobby right now, like I said, is the parenting publication I'm working on. Um, I sew. Um, I'm not nearly as homemakerish as this all makes me sound, I swear. We've been hunting Pokemon, my husband and I, lately. That's been a lot of fun. It gets us out of the house. It's a silly game, but I enjoy it. Yeah, just exploring the city. Like I said, we just moved to Chicago a couple months ago. So, yeah, just exploring the city and uh, watching too much TV. That's pretty much what I do. <laughs> Do you have any parting words of wisdom for someone who might be interested in a career like yours? Yeah. So there's going to be two type of people. There's going to be probably a college graduate who's trying to figure out what they want to do. And if that's the case, don't let them get you down because your parents and your teachers are probably going to tell you that that's not a viable career choice. And it very well may be. You might need a little bit of corporate experience first and that's okay if you're in corporate and considering taking the leap uh, to freelance i just say do it there's never a perfect time um, i was terrified when i did it to be honest i mean you're letting go of the whole safety net the 401k the benefits it's really really hard to do um, it's never going to seem like a perfect time and at a certain point you just need to set a deadline and do it and that's what i did do you have a way for folks to contact you uh that you mentioned your your new website. Can you talk more about that? Sure. Yeah. So the website is called sortacountrymom.com. 
I like the the alliteration of the com and the mom at the end. You can definitely contact me through there. Um, it's just a community and a, a publication for moms who are looking for like really positive community. So many of the mom groups and things that I see online get very polarized, and there's a lot of bashing. And I, it's something I really hate to see because being a parent is very difficult, and I just don't like seeing people make it more difficult than it needs to be by being nasty. So my goal was to create a positive environment for moms to ask and give advice. So you can definitely contact me through there or Twitter. It's uh, D, my first initial, A-N-T-O-S-Z is my Twitter handle. So you can definitely reach out there. Excellent. Well, I have really appreciated you being on the podcast today. This is, a, like I said, a very interesting topic and in career as people make decisions about what they want to do and there's lots of places to learn about how to be a writer, but to move into that path that you have, it's pretty amazing that you can do this from home and have that flexibility. And it's it's just something that I think more people should explore as a potential avenue because there's not a straight college, you know, a whole mm -hmm. college degree wrapped around it. So people don't explore items like this. So thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone, for joining me on the I Love My Job podcast. If you have any questions or would like to contact me, I can be reached through my email, cassie at cassiecrossley.com, C-A-S-S-I-E-C-R-O-S-S-L-E-Y, -S 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 or you can reach me through my website, ilovemyjobpodcast.com. Thank you again for joining.